Uh, so today we'll talk about the CFD, so the fluid computing fluid dynamics in uh, Midas and FX. So it's a very complex subject. So we will uh, center on these four points, uh, the main analysis issues that you can uh, encounter uh, when you are doing CFD analysis, so why uh, to perform CFD analysis. We'll talk about the work environment, how to perform that in Midas and FX. And I will show you a few pre and post process functions which are special for CFD analysis. And finally, we'll talk about uh, what we will implement in the next years in uh, NFX about CFD. So, first of all, why do we use uh, CFD? Well, there's a lot of problems which require uh, CFD analysis. First of all, the evaluation of the performance of a product. Uh, so, in which a gas or a liquid is flowing. So, it can be a blower, a butterfly valve, a reactor, for example. Um, and you want to know the velocity of the flow, the pressure which is applied on uh, the structural uh, parts, uh, and everything. It can be also the investigation of uh, the performance of a product due to heating or cooling. Uh, by the gas or the liquid. So, uh, it is typically used for LED equipment. So, you can see a few examples here uh, which have been performed in Midas and FX. So, PCB also, uh, cooling. And it can be also the flow of the liquid uh, direction and flux that you want to check. So, in a facility, for example, or a building, so it can be a parking lot, for example, you want to know if the fans are correctly uh, taking out the air inside. And CFD is also used a lot in um, marine, marine equipment, so to know the wave behavior, for example, and for that we use something called the free water surface uh, feature. So, it's a feature to simulate the interface between the air and the, the liquid. So, you can use that to see the waves uh, or, for example, for the sloshing, it can be used also. Now, uh, to understand the behavior of a gas or liquid which is flowing outside a product, this is also very important. So, for example, a flow around the wind turbine because you want to know if the flow will not maybe deform uh, the, the wind turbine for a certain pressure. Now, we can use CFD for the evaluation of the durability of the product, which is influenced by the gas or the liquid pressure inside. So, uh, you have an example here. You want to know uh, the pressure inside this valve to know if uh, it will not uh, break the system, or maybe it can be related to all the problems uh, like the corrosion, uh, if you have big pressure at some part, it can uh, increase the corrosion or this kind of problem. And here you have a problem of sloshing, so evaluation of the fluid force on the wall, which are due to the sloshing phenomenon. Okay, now uh, we'll talk about the work environment. So, first of all, NFX CFD is compatible with, uh, so it's exactly the same interface than uh, Midas NFX. So, you have the two modes as well, designer mode and analyst mode. So, if you are a designer and you want to perform quickly uh, an analysis, you can use the designer mode. So, it's uh, simplified, you just import the model, apply the boundary and check the flow. If you are an analyst and you want to to perform high-end uh, analysis with very uh, difficult shape uh, or model, then of course you'll have to use the analysis mode. And all in these two modes, you can use all the features of CFD, which are written here. So 14 turbulence flow models, the analysis of the heat convection in fluid and the complex heat transfer by heat conduction. So you can also analyze the solid and the fluid together uh, for heat transfer. You have the free water surface analysis, uh, the moving mesh, diffusion advection, uh, etc. 
it can import uh, 11 type of CAD, CAD file such as CATIA, Unigraphics, ProE, SOLIDWORKS, SOLIDWORKS and this is the typical uh, workflow that uh, you will uh, have in CFD. So first of all you have to create the CFD volume then uh, you can use a simplification feature to remove the holes and the fillets which are not useful. Then you apply the boundary condition, you create the materials, you mesh it and you get the results and after that you can create a report. So right now I will show you that in the software, so how we can perform quickly a CFD analysis in Midas and FX. Okay, so now I got uh, Midas and FX on the, on the screen, and I will uh, begin to load uh, my model. So I will go into the, I will open the file. Okay, I will show you all the parts. So this is actually a pump equipment. So it has been divided in two uh, for this uh, analysis because it's symmetric, so it's uh, better to cut it in two to be more efficient. So I already created the CFD volume inside, so what I will do is just show only the CFD volume and I will apply the boundary condition and everything so you can see uh, how to do it. So the first thing to do is to create the CFD material. So I go in the material tab, then I go in the fluid CFD, um, and I select uh, fresh water at 25 degrees Celsius, so it will be the liquid flowing inside this pump. I go in the property and I create a CFD 3D property with this fresh water assigned. Okay, now we can um, assign the boundary condition uh, to the model. So in NFX 2013 you have a tab for CFD, so here you have all the options you need to perform a CFD analysis. So first thing I will do is to assign some wall condition. So uh, I will I'm just selecting all the faces in this model. Then I will unselect the faces on which I don't apply the wall. So this face because it's symmetric, these two faces uh, because it will be the inlet and the outlet. I use the condition no slip. Uh, and here I will assign separately this surface so you will see why later. Okay. So again I create another wall just for this face, um, I will give a name. So I do that because I want to uh, get the pressure force on this face. So you need to divide the, the wall uh, you know, in several walls to do that. Okay, so I'll apply the inlet condition. So for the inlet, I select the inlet face and I will apply a pressure for the inlet, so I chosen to apply a pressure which is almost two times the atmospheric pressure. Okay, the so liquid will enter uh, like that, and the outlet, here, so it will be equal to the atmospheric pressure. So, uh, if I remember well, 100, 1, 3, 2, 5. OK. Now, uh, the things to do is to, to mesh the model. So, I have to go in the Mesh tab to click on 3D Mesh go in the advanced properties and unselect the high order element because in CFD it cannot consider the second order elements so I will just uh, do that 
Here you have to select the appropriate size for the mesh. So here you see it's a bit coarse. So I will use 0 0.004 and I will mesh it right away. Okay. Now I will do something um, to monitor the results during the analysis. So it's a new function also of 2013. Um, to do that, I go in the result monitoring and uh, I have to select a few points here, a few nodes. So I select three nodes, choose total velocity pressure and actually the, these two parameters will be monitored during the analysis. So it's a very uh, interesting feature. Uh, Okay, now that I've done that and can create the analysis case, so I will do a steady state analysis here. So I will call it steady. Um, now in the analysis parameters, so this is very important to tab because you have to set the time increments, the number of steps you will use. Uh, this is very important, especially in CFD. So we'll use 12 seconds for the time increments and 60 steps and in the I will use two maximum iteration in order to go a bit quickly and for the turbulence model uh, you see here you have all the turbulence model you can use I will use the simplest one the zero equation mixing lens model and now I, as it is a symmetric model I have to define the symmetry condition so I check this option here now it's uh, done, so I can run the analysis. So it's actually working on my uh, laptop, so it's a 32 bytes uh, PC. Uh, so you'll see it's still uh, relatively fast. So one step, ten steps, it's uh, even faster than usually. And here you have the velocity uh, at all the, the nodes I checked for the monitoring. And you have the pressure uh, results which are modified. So you can see during the analysis uh, the results of the pressure and uh, all that. Okay, so it took 37 seconds. Not bad. Um, you have two types of results that you can check. One is the pressure. So um, here I, I have it. And the velocity. So total velocity. So if I go to the animation, it gives you something like that. So now this is the last step of the analysis because I'm doing the steady state. And now I will show you the tools you can use uh, for the post-process into uh, CFD analysis. So the first one uh, we have, uh, to, to see better first I will uh, do the mirror plane in order to uh, view a symmetric like that. So the first uh, option is the flow pass that you can view. So you have to first to select the, the step, then select your parts select the faces on which you want to see the flow and you see uh, you got the flow pass inside the model. An interesting thing is that if you want to know the flow on a specific face you can select this face and the flow will be uh, shown on this specific face. Now what I uh, will do the other tools too Second one is the flow quantity. So first of all select the part, select the step, and you can select any section in the model. And if you click on plot, 
it will automatically calculate the, the flux at this section. So you have also the direction, the main direction of the flow at the section. So it's very useful. You can uh, do that in all, um, at any section. And the last tool is the fluid force on the wall. So using this feature, so you have two walls here, the first one I created and the second one. So this is why I created a separate wall. I will just check the pressure force and the moment on this wall. So I click OK. And you will have, uh, you have a table which uh, show you, shows you the force, uh, and the pressure force and the pressure moment on uh, this wall. So you see for the last step you have the values here, uh, 16 Newton. Okay, now um, I will show you another interesting uh, feature of NFX, the possibility to uh, export the pressure results of the CFD to apply them on a structural model. So to do that, you have to extract first the results. So you have extract tool to extract the data. Select the pressure at uh, the nodes for all the steps, oh, sorry, for only last step. Now I just select all the nodes in the model and I click on table. Now I get a table with uh, the, all the nodes, their position and uh, the value of uh, the pressure at the step. So what I do is just I copy all of these value uh, and I will apply them on the structural model. Okay, so I select the value and I click on Control C to select everything. Now I can open my structural model. So uh, it is I think it's this one, okay. Okay, so I already prepared the model. So here you have the, the body of the pump. So uh, I show you the label so you can see what I've done. So I applied a symmetric condition, of course. Then I pinned the hole here and uh, I apply some contacts between all the parts because I have several parts in this system. So and I meshed the model. So I used the steel to do that. So to import the data from the CFD analysis, you have to go to the static heat analysis tab and you have a button which is called from result. So click on that. Go into interpolation tab, uh, and here you have normal pressure column. You see at the same time that you can do that with other types of results. So it can be directional pressure, uh, nodal temperature, uh, force or moment. So here, use the pressure on 3D element phase. Now I have to select all the phases in the model. And here in this window, I just copy all the data I got from the CFD. So uh, the V1 is the value of the pressure at this node. You can enter a name, so it will be CFD pressure. Click on OK. OK, now let's uh, create the analysis case. So it will be simple linear static analysis and solve it. So we'll have to wait a few seconds because uh, 
we have 100 uh, elements, 100,000, so. Okay, we got the results, so it took uh, less than 20 seconds, it's uh, relatively okay. And I'll check first the translation. So this is the translation due to the fluid. Of course, the deformation has been increased. So uh, I just back it to real. And this is the stress. So this is the stress inside the pump, which is caused by the CFD pressure of the fluid. Uh, if you want to see uh, the deformation, uh, it gives you something like that. So when you increase the deformation. So I can as well uh, show you all the model. So this is the pump. And if you want to see where is the stress, you can always use the ISO value, for example, to detect uh, the points where the stress is uh, big, is maximum. OK, it's all for this first demonstration. Um, let's go back quickly to the PPT. So this is exactly what I've shown to you, the material property, the meshing, the results. You have the possibility to create automatically a report. Um, and, okay. Now the post-process graphics and the report generation. So uh, the flux auto calculation, the cables for the simulation, then the contour, the vectors, the graph, uh, isograms, and the MS Word format report. Okay, now let's talk about the pre-post process functions. Uh, if you have some questions during the presentation, please uh, write them into the chat section, and I will answer about this question at the end of the presentation. And so this is the Boolean operation first. So you, you can create this CFD volume into an effect. Uh, you, you can use the model simplification tools as well. You have a small database of material property, which is a bit different than the one uh, of the structural, because the material for CFD are different. Then you can use the CPU parallel meshing in uh, NFX as well. So uh, CFD always include very big models and it's always also better to use one, two or four cores to compute it uh, faster. And you have the possibility to check uh, the mesh uh, and to remesh it automatically for 2D mesh. So this is quite important to have a lot of criterion to, to check the mesh quality because in CFD the, the mesh quality is very important. And finally you have uh, the, uh, what I call indirect fluid structure interaction. So this is not a fully coupled uh, fluid structure interaction. Uh, it is like I've shown during the example uh, the possibility to export the pressure and apply it on the structural model. So in this way, you have the possibility to assess the, the linear displacement of uh, your structural model as well. And NFX provide also the moving mesh and such high-end features. So here you have a small animation about uh, a pump equipment. So this is using the, the moving mesh feature. And right now, we'll go into uh, NFX again. And I will show you a second uh, analysis, which is using this uh, moving mesh feature. So I will close first all the models I opened. Open a new uh, model. because a lot of people have interest into this uh, moving mesh. So I will use a simplified model. 
so uh, something like that so I will display the line only so you can see uh, so it's a kind of uh, uh, equipment with two uh, rotating parts inside so I will we'll, uh, demonstrate how to uh, assign the moving uh, assign the rotation to this part so first thing to do is to uh, to save uh, don't forget to save then to create the material so uh, I will delete the structural material by default and add a fluid to the model again I will use uh, fresh water create a property for CFD okay now I have to define the boundary condition to this model so again go in the CFD tab I'll define the inlet first so it will be here I'll define a velocity this time so one meter per second and outlet 0 uh, pressure ok now uh, define some walls around so it will be a uh, no slip wall so it means that the velocity will be null at uh, on the boundary of this wall ok ok now I will hide labels and hide also this part and I have to input some special walls to this rotating part that will make rotate uh, the parts so this is the why you have motion control here so you have to select all the surface of the rotating part then choose a dimensionless wall applied distance wall check the motion control and here you have to define the motion in the motion manager so the center of gravity of this first uh, rotating part is zero 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 so I let it like that here I activate the rotation in Z axis and I will give it a rigid motion so to do that you go into the CFD function and you create a function which is called rotation and you give it a value so it will be uh, 35 meter per second multiplied by the time so actually you're defining an angle click on OK and don't forget to assign this function so it appears here now click on OK click on OK and assign the motion click on apply uh, now we'll do the same for the second part so don't forget that you cannot do the same for the two parts because the two parts are not the same gravity center so you have to define uh, separately the motion so you have to define a second motion uh, in the motion manager and here enter the position of the center of gravity here it's in millimeter so uh, I will use a thousand because it's a one meter distance between each between another here I will use the same uh, rigid motion so same velocity same angular velocity and assign it here ok now the next uh, thing to do is to assign some contact between uh, the fluid which is in this part and the fluid of the rotating part so we'll hide the labels um, go in the model here the thing is to manage well uh, the part which are active and the one unactive so to define a contact go in the manual uh, CFD here choose a type of contact so here it's a fluid fluid contact uh, select the faces so uh, 
don't miss with one faces, otherwise you may have some problems. Now I unselect this part and I activate the rotating parts. And I select again the surface. And here you have to assign contact parameters special for CFD. So if you forget that, you may have problems too. So we'll use zero for the thermal resistance because it's a fluid and fluid. And I will include the mesh deformation. And don't forget to assign it here. Click on OK. Now that uh, all that is done, I can just create the analysis case. Oh, sorry, before doing that, I have to fix the mesh which is not moving. So uh, the mesh which is which will be on this part will be not moving. So go in the mesh deformation tab, select faces, select every faces here, and fix the mesh. So there's no mesh right now, but uh, uh, you have to fix it. Otherwise, everything will rotate. And I can go to the mesh step. So 3D mesh. Uh, before doing that, uh, it's always better to have uh, more fine mesh around the parts which are rotating because the, this is a critical part of the model. So I will use a size control to select the rotating parts here and to enter a smaller mesh size, so 30 millimeter. Okay. Now I can mesh it. Again, uncheck the option high order element. Select all the parts. You can select 50, for example, for the size. And OK. OK, now we got the mesh. Now what I will do is define also a monitoring, uh, a result monitoring option. So to do that, I want to do it inside the model. So as you see here, uh, I, I don't have access to inside the mesh. So I, what I will do is that I will select this part of the mesh and hide them. So now on the screen I have that. And I will go to Results Monitoring and select the nodes I want to monitor. So this one, this one on the outlet and the one, this one on the outlet. I'll monitor the velocity and the pressure. Okay, can activate the mesh again. And I can create my analysis case. So it will be this time I will do transient analysis. So now another critical part is the analysis control option. The you have to activate the mesh deformation. Then for the time increment, I will choose 0 0.1. And let's say uh, 10 increments. Of course, for the maximum iteration, if you increase the number, you will have more accurate results. Here, it's just a demonstration, so I just let it to 2. I activate as well uh, the turbulence model. And we are ready to run. So again, you will see the CFD graph and the result monitored at each step. And you can follow the, uh, the process here in the output window. So if I check the velocity, so this is uh, inside, this is at the inlet, the pressure also.
Okay, 10 increments, 50 seconds, it's uh, not bad. Uh, let's check the velocity. And when you check the with the rotating parts, don't forget to go to real deformation, otherwise you will have something strange. We use a clipping plane so you can see uh, the parts rotating inside. Okay, and the animation, so you see it rotates. You can as well uh, check the fluid pass, so the flow pass inside. And this is the... Oh yeah. By selecting the right step first. Okay. The faces... And now we have a view of uh, what is going inside. Okay, it's all for this uh, second tutorial. So let's come back to the presentation and we'll talk about other uh, subjects. So, Midas NFX CFD has been uh, approved by a lot of uh, norms and verified so the algorithms are very uh, accurate and the solver is fully numerical so uh, all the results you obtain are uh, calculated results. Now uh, we have a lot of project application also uh, for example this one on the vortex detection in uh, pump sumps so you have a model here and this is using uh, the free surface uh, option in order to detect where is uh, where the vortex is creating during the analysis. So here in this animation you see uh, the flow uh, the flow uh, which is happening and what we uh, detected during the simulation is that the vortex was created at this position and if we compare it with the theory in what is written inside the thesis it was exactly at the same position. You can compare the two pictures here. Okay, it's um, almost all for this uh, webinar. I'd like to invite you also on whole social networks. Uh, we have a lot of videos which are already available on the YouTube channel uh, and we are also on Facebook and LinkedIn on Twitter. So if you, you are on these networks, uh, you can follow us and let us some comments about uh, all uh, what you think and uh, if you want to know more you can also ask us uh, we're always open to to give you more details about any type of simulation that you would like to perform or uh, anything so this is the address of the youtube channel and next week we will have two all the webinars which uh, will be a bit more advanced so the first one which is really really interesting uh, is about the nonlinear explicit and implicit dynamic analysis with NFX and we will have a special guest during this webinar uh, Renier Van Veren from uh, South Africa so he will be a speaker about his own uh, application uh, using NFX on this kind of uh, complex analysis. Uh, then we'll have a second webinar about the composite analysis definition and usage in NFX and we'll have also a guest speaker Matteo Vettori from Italy and he's a PhD in composite analysis so he will also talk about the theory of composite analysis and uh, show you some project application. I hope you will join these webinars which are available on the website. So if you go on MidasNFX.com website you can subscribe for these two sessions. And if you uh, don't have NFX yet, you can still try it for 30 days. 
So just go on the website, mydasnfx.com, and get your 30 days trial. So there is no limit on the trial, uh, only the time. So you can use structural, you can use CFD as well. Uh, so don't hesitate. And if you need anything, uh, some tutorial or something like that, you can send me an email. So I'll write briefly my email in the chat section, which is cyprin at midasit.com. So you can send me uh, any request to that email, and I will uh, answer to you. Now it's time of the questions. So if you have questions, please uh, let them in the section. And I will answer uh, right now to a few questions that have been asked. So the first question was, is it possible to couple the CFD with the structural analysis in the transient phase? So uh, you're talking about FSI analysis, free structure interaction. As I told during this uh, webinar, uh, we don't have yet the free structure interaction, at least the coupled one, but you have the possibility to uh, export the load and apply it on the structural model, which is uh, all already a good feature. But it will come in the future, as you saw uh, at the end of the presentation. Some people are asking about the typical example we have on the wind wing section in 2D, for example, uh, all the winglet, the wings, fuselage. Yes, we have a few examples about that. And uh, if you're interested, we will send you that. Someone is asking about uh, which mode we use uh, during the demonstration, designer or analyst. So this was the analyst mode uh, because you saw the geometry uh, creation tools. Uh, in the designer mode, it's a bit more simple, but you can perform as well uh, this kind of simulation uh, if you don't have to modify the CAD model. Um, where the, can the user specify the turbulence model? Um, well, when you define the analysis, you saw the tab where I define all these options. You have the 14 turbulence model which are uh, shown, so you can define them here. Midas NFX support the 64 bytes machine. Yes, uh, NFX supports 64 bytes, the pre-post as well as the solver. So if you have a 64 bytes, um, let's say small workstation, it will be uh, much faster than my uh, small laptop. And it is uh, recommended to, for CFD actually because uh, for very big, very big models and uh, application, it can go up uh, 15, mi 15 million of mesh. So we had some cases with 15 million of mesh. And in this case, uh, you need to have a small workstation, otherwise uh, the RAM and everything is not enough to, to run it uh, as fastly. OK, I hope uh, you enjoyed the webinar. And uh, I hope you will see you uh, next week for these two other webinars that we prepared. And if you have any question, please send us to the email that uh, I've written in the chat section. Bye.